So my name is Sarah Snow. Some people also know me as Snow Forest. Both are my, actually my real given names at birth. So I was born on a snowstorm, which is why my name is Snow. Um, and then my mom gave me an English name, Sarah. So if you find me on other channels, you know that all of those are actually part of this identity that is here. That is me. But I'm here today to share a little bit of maybe my time on the other side, the near-death experience that I had when I was 29 years old and 37. That was caused actually from a plant called water hemlock. For those of you that don't know what water hemlock is, it's a poisonous plant, one of the most poisonous plants in North America. To this date, I am the only known survivor that I've communicated with or that anybody's ever introduced me to that has had an interaction with this plant and come back from that with an experience. The plant was created basically like numbness in my peripheral nervous system, which then suffocated me to death. But in all aspects, it was a blessing because what I realized is from the other side of it, what life really is and that we actually don't die. What I have to say about that experience is that the more we struggle to live is the more actually we feel pain when it comes to dying and what death has taught me is that the more we surrender to this life that we have in embracing all of our challenges and our insecurities and our suffering and our pain, the less pain, resistance and suffering we actually really do tangibly experience in this physical body. And for some of us that might seem really lofty and ridiculous to say like we can't feel pain in this body anymore, but it's not that we don't feel pain, it's that we carry a new perspective about pain that actually liberates us from a lot of the lessons or difficulties actually that God God wants to show us in our life because God is actually showing us what we need to learn in this life about life and love itself through these experiences with death or accidents or diseases or illnesses or pain. There's actually a deeper lesson behind all of those things that is trying to actually wake us up to the living dream that we actually are in this moment. And so for all intents and purposes, I came on the show today not to talk about how I died anymore in detail, but more about how dying and death has changed the way that I live my life. Because the way that God or love or whatever we want to say, the creator or source has touched me from my interaction with it after I've left my mind and body is that we're here on this earth to fully and completely embrace everything so that we can fully embrace life and love. So what it's taught me is that there's a level of gratefulness that I have in life through all aspects, whether it's positive or negative or painful or joyful, that allows me to have a specific amount of liberation. So diving into the story itself, I was living prior to my NDE a pretty normal life. I was working as a insurance specialist. I had a partner, I had a home, I had all the material things that you could want, but I felt myself really void and depressed with this so-called life that I was told to create in the world. And it actually didn't bring me any really deep satisfaction. And so after that, the job and the house and the partner that I felt like I really wanted, I just felt like something was void in my life. And it just felt so depressing that I just didn't know what else to quote unquote do. And I started to have health problems because of it. And I call that now my spiritual immune system reacting to like a non-purpose led driven life, like a matrix. This is all the things that I should do. These are all the people that I should talk to. This is the job I should have. And it actually led me to have a tremendous amount of anxiety in my daily day interaction actions because I couldn't tap into any aspect of authenticity within myself. I didn't know who I was, what I was here for, why we were here. And so it led me on a journey to exploring different holistic and alternative health remedies to sort of aid that feeling of like emptiness. And so that exploration actually brought me into the forest where I started to learn more about plant medicines. And these are not psychedelic plant medicines. These are just plant medicines in Northern BC. So I'm from British Columbia, Canada. I ended up moving to a small little town. I lived in a trailer without running water and I decided to fully immerse myself in learning and communing and building relationships with plants. So I started to work with different plants from like even nettles and like just regular plants that are assisting the body. And I got really immersed into learning more about women's wellness. So I started to study a plant called Angelica root. And from me studying that plant, I found it in the marshlands and I wildcrafted this plant, not knowing that there's a twin of that plant that is actually really poisonous known as water hemlocks. So it looked very similar to 
the uneducated eye. But what happened was I harvested the angelica root, but it I felt like it was contaminated with the water hemlock that was in its vicinity. And that actual concoction in the combination of angelica and hemlock put, took me, placed me in a coma and I was in the hospital for four days. And then I awoke from that experience. So basically what that plant did was it's a circuitoxin that shut down my peripheral nervous system. And basically what happens is from the neck down, I have no control and it basically suffocated me to death. But during that time of losing my breathing, I remembered a practice about just laying down and almost like in yoga and Shavasana, we lay down and we feel our breath slowly entering the body. I kind of went into the space where I said, you know what, just remember that practice, remember that breath and slow the breath down in a way that the breath, I could feel basically the substance or the essence of breath coming into my body. And when I did that, I started to lose that fear, lose that resistance to the place that I didn't want to go. And because in the mind, that place was death. So I kind of surrendered into the moment and breathing. And when I felt that breath come into the body, it's when everything started to kind of shift. And that's when I left my actual physical body. So when I left my actual physical body, I was floating on top of myself. So now for a recap, I was actually in the hospital looking at myself on the table and I could actually see the nurses hot prodding my veins. So one particular nurse, actually, she was prodding my veins and she couldn't find my veins because my veins are quite small. And I could see this particular nurse and how she was handling it and how she was getting frustrated. And so when I did come back to consciousness, I could actually tell my folks that there was this nurse that was in the room that was poking and prodding me that I could feel that maybe she didn't have an awareness of, but maybe she should like relook at how she's treating patients that are actually unconscious because we're not actually unconscious. We're still here. And so I could describe how she looked when she came into the room, what she was doing. And so in that space, when I left my body, I was everywhere and then also here, but not in the density of the physical body. So the way in which it felt to leave the body was extreme, full peace. So once that resistance to the fear of death was diminished, that tangible feeling of like deep, nurturing peace, almost like you had the biggest hug from the most safest person in the whole world holding you. That's when I was starting to witness the reality that was happening in the 3D dimension below me happening. But I was stepped back sort of like in a witness place, watching all that happen from that space of deep peace. So that's one layer of when I left my body, I was sort of sitting in this space where I just felt like there was nothing that I need to do. There was no thing. There was no way of being. There was nothing to think about. It was just that there was a witnessing of what was and what is. And so that was an aspect of what I believe God is. But there are many aspects to what God is because it's such a multidimensional, multifaceted form. So there was that. And then after that experience, I went into this place where I kept rising and met myself into a place where there was total, like 100% darkness. So like the darkest dark hole that you could ever conceptualize. Like there was no body, there was no anything. It was just immersion in this limited space, this limitless space and this space of complete contentment. And then when I was in this darkness, I just could feel like the vastness of everything, almost as if I was sitting in the vastness of consciousness. And when I went into the darkest, darkest, darkest place, at the end of that darkest place was a small white light. And now in this way, explaining this, there's no such thing as time because it was just all these aspects of self and moments existing all together at once in this tiny white light that shone so brightly that it immersed my entire essence, I want to say, in that space with this rapturous light that kind of like shook me to the point of like stillness, but I wasn't a body anymore. So if you imagine me as a consciousness or an essence, it was like I was rapturing or shaking to a point of actual complete expansion, but there was complete stillness in that. Like I can't really explain it in any other way. It's just like complete aliveness and in immersed in peace, but there's nothing to do, nowhere to go, just that space. And from that experience, I then had a witnessing of all these faces all at once in one second. So it was past, present, future, if you wanna put 
a timeline on it of all of these faces of people that had ever loved me, would love me in this moment and would ever love me in the future. And it all happened so fast. It's like in one second, I could see everything. And then in that space, I just felt love, tremendous love. And that love actually vacuumed me back into my body. So I didn't go across the bridge in this particular ND experience, but I went to the point where the bridge starts and I felt like I experienced and felt all the love that was actually still on this earth plane that I would experience in my body. And then from there, God brought me back. And then when I was in my body, I woke up. And when I woke up, I saw everybody around me, my family. And interestingly enough, like I just felt like love was pouring out from my pores and my eyes. And I still felt like even in the body, I couldn't feel that density yet, which some people explain when they come back into their body they feel this density I did and I still had this reverberating light that was literally like laying on top of the essence of my density like I was more than just my body because we are more than just our bodies but I was laying on top of it and, and I remember them giving me a piece of paper and even though I, I couldn't really even put together words or read or write for some reason God spoke through me and I wrote I love and I stopped there and I showed everybody that I wrote, I love, and that was it. I couldn't write anything else. And that stopping myself from writing I love was not stopping because it was like I had no mind in that space, but God wanted to say something because it's not just I love you or I love me or I love the thing or I, or I love this external reality or I love some concrete object. It was that my I that was my mind diminished and that I, God, is love that is in me that is a part of me that is not only me but that is all so love is and I love and that was really profound and there are many many really profound what I want to say provisions by God that have been given from this experience and then even after several years down my life I have many other different stories completely like miraculous things even the birth of my daughter this last year totally miraculous but through all of that experience, it's like this gratitude, deep, deep gratitude that God or the essence of love is always with us, in us, around us, is us. That if you surrender the I of the ego I, you can really immerse yourself in the I love. And then your world and your life becomes a possibility, an opening, an opportunity, an ability to share, a relationship. Instead of all the things that the I wants to place contemplation or judgment or a analysis on and so when I stepped into doing this interview today on this channel like I felt what God wanted to do through me was to basically anoint me into saying this moment now is where love is we don't have to wait for anything we don't have to wait for our death because death doesn't actually really exist but we have these moments of near death to wake us up to the fact that in this moment we already are love the kingdom is already here heaven is already within us in our heart you know we just forget that because we're looking through the veil of the ego we're looking through the veil of the mind's compartmentalizations or judgments to what this world is if it's good or if it's bad because in this physical body and in this 3d reality we exist only in polarity the good the bad the light the dark the life the death but truly like the truth behind all of this compartmentalization and all this dense compartmental uh, this dense separation is that there is an essence that is all pervading all knowing all seeing all loving that is trying to communicate through our meat sacks <laughs> through our basically the physical body it's trying to communicate through this representation of this form but i feel that's the whole key of all of this is this surrendering the mind and surrendering the I as separate and then with that there's a unity that comes into play with recognizing that everything around us is just a mirror to the inside space with regards to the relationship we have with love itself or the relationship we have with God itself or whoever you want to call it it's that we are seeing the outside world as a mirrored projection of whatever resistances we're still holding on to love which creates then all of the lessons that we need to learn on this earth plane. But what a blessing it is to learn it because if we didn't have our meat sack bodies, we didn't have this physical form and the suffering and the pain to be able to experience all of these things, we could never wake up to the beautiful dream of life because we need these hardships to show us where God is still teaching us about our resistances to love. So I think my message today more is 
about how death changed me in this way, how it allowed me to see that everything in life is a lesson, everything in life is a part of a grand design, a beautiful design that helps us to wake up to where we're withholding to forgiveness, to loving each other as self, through loving our experiences as an opportunity. And that's what I came here to talk about today is that death is an opportunity because it allows us to have the opportunity to really live life.